On today's episode, the news is a flowing. Where are these players going to be a going? Well, we make our predictions on some of these free agents where they're landing. Let us know where you think they're going to land as well in the comments below. Subscribe and enjoy the video. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Tuesday, March 7th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Chillo. Another great episode coming your way. Free agency predictions on today's show. And uh, if it times up right, maybe some of these reported signings will happen right before I make my prediction and I can Ooh, look tr- smarter. Look very smart. Oh, I see. Thought we were going to be dealing with a couple other free agency predictions on today's show, but news that we'll share with you. Did, in fact, break. Uh, We know some destinations for a couple of free agents. And there's some rumors abounding, so we'll talk about it all. We do have a very big announcement as we welcome you in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. We have the winner of the Listener League spot. This is from everybody that pre-ordered the UDK from Super Bowl Sunday to March 1st. You were all entered to win, but only one will be in the Listener League. And that person's sake so really it's it's a big announcement like it's gigantic for one for person. one person yeah yeah it, m- so hopefully it's you most of you listening right now you're not gonna hear your name but one of you oh man this is a big moment here we go <laughs> jason go ahead jake fells on you're in i hope that you are the one listening right now if, if Jake is not listening right now, that will be very disappointing. Congratulations. You have won a spot in the Listener League. And uh, if anybody else wants to get in on the Dynasty Pass, which is due for an update. Oh, yep. it's, it's in the shop right now. We've been working it's on getting, our Dynasty rankings, combine information. It's getting tuned up, pulled it into the garage. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the DFS boys <laughs> are getting the, uh, the wheels. Boys? Yeah, the boys. <laughs> DFS boys. boys. They're getting the wheels. Uh, <laughs> pulled them off, putting some yeah. new wheels on it. Yeah, fixing uh, what What other car things? You a we car say? guy, the, Kyle? The alignment. You know how to fix a car? Don't care about cars at all. Don't care about it. Does that mean you also are inept? No comment. Okay. Some, uh, the, the, the axle. It's getting, oh, yeah. It's getting, real, it's getting fixed up. Car, car, carburetor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wheel wells. Mm-hmm. Spark, spark plugs. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, spark plug. Everyone loves yeah, a good a spark good, plug. I mean, that's an important part. So it's getting tuned There's up. There's no spark without the plug. No, no. There's just spark. Yes. Um, well, I, I don't even know where I was going. But the, the Dynasty Pass is getting a post-combine update. Uh, so we'll be we'll be talking about the combine, some takeaways uh, here in the end of the future. It was fun to have some more NFL news, right? Watching uh, the measurements, the all-important measurements. Yeah, I, I think uh, generically speaking – pretty disappointed with uh people's weight i think people need to start eating <laughs> worse because everyone was weighing a little Bulk up a little lighter than i wanted to across the board I, you know maybe it was their scales maybe the scales have were... you thought about opening maybe like a clinic for oh i can teach them how to <laughs> bulk <laughs> J- jason moore's bul- uh, combine training yeah <laughs> it's just hey, a buffet jordan addison <laughs> Come to my house for two weeks. I'll get you right on that scale. Oh, my gosh. People are living with him, trying to get up for the combine. Got your meal planned. Look, look, 6 a.m., bacon, 6.30, bacon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's some leftover. Um, so, yeah, it, w- it was uh, a weekend of, of NFL players trying to make their mark, and uh, I know that we've all shuffled our rookie rankings a little bit. Yep. Uh, just based on where we see the NFL stacking, it, that's what it's about. By the way, it's it's the combine. It might not all come down to this individual metric on this thing. It's more about the reshuffling that happens in NFL general managers' minds mm-hmm. 
and therefore, you know, draft capital is a huge part of what makes a a rookie uh, a valuable asset to your fantasy team because they're going to have more opportunities to, and, and there's more commitment from the team. Longer leash. Yeah, and so you you really when when you see the results and you see them shuffle in the minds of NFL GMs, it changes how you look at it for fantasy football, and there will be a post draft update update as well to the dynasty pass. Mm -hmm. They're good. That that's the big one. I mean, right now it's real fun. You know, everything uh, moving around because the combine matters because the combine matters to the NFL and the NFL are the people who are giving out the draft capital. So it's it's still an important weekend. Absolutely. But ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to get in on the dynasty pass right now, which is also available in the app uh, for the first time. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Wait a minute. How do I not have this ready? Send in the car. Oh. Send in the car. Derek Carr has agreed to a four-year deal with the new England Orleans oh. Saints. Mm. I was trying to tease the New York Jets because that was oh, at, I you know they, they need a quarterback. But uh, he's guaranteed $60 million at signing. Uh, Jameis Winston likely to be cut. $100 million in total guarantees over the – life of the contract it, it actually isn't a bad contract I think 37 and a half million per year which puts him when I look at like the list top to bottom of you know yearly salaries I'm like that's about where Derek Carr should be slotting in right now in today's NFL you know what's the the interesting thing for all the the numbers that get thrown out things you know change year to year because the, the actual the salary cap for each NFL team generally goes up every single year it, it it would really, I think, be better if somehow we could all start thinking in terms of percentage of salary cap because the numbers, mm. the numbers don't. It doesn't matter that the the actual raw number of how much money a player is making. I do not care. What are they counting against the salary cap? That's it, what matters. That is a very interesting point, especially with like a primary position like the quarterback. Yeah, where you're starting quarterback percentage of cap. I just don't think the. Uh, the article writers out there are going to be able to give up Yo, the, 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 great, the the biggest contract of all time, which they will all be for here on into the future as the cap increases and the profits go up. Yeah, yeah it doesn't sound as good as like, oh, you got 19%. <laughs> like, yeah, it oh, doesn't. Okay, well, yeah. what did he get? You yeah. don't picture the briefcase then. Yeah, like let, how much money? So then I could get mad at how much money that this player is making. Yeah, so Derek Carr arrives in New Orleans. You know, we just had a top 10 things to remember yeah. episode where one of them was literally remember what you said last year. So it was a reiteration of the fact that the new arrival quarterbacks didn't solve all the problems for these teams. Uh, you had a little Jameis Winston, a lot of Andy Dalton. That was the New Orleans situation last year. You saw Chris Olave, who uh, I think, you know, he had a very good year as a rookie, but yeah. it was better when he had Jameis Winston. More deep shots was really the equation there. Had some injuries at the end of the year. Yeah, Chris Olave is a great player. He would have been great with Andy Dalton if he was the starter this coming year. He'll be great with Derek Carr. Now, Derek Carr has a, a history of supporting a good wide receiver. One obviously did did it with Devontae Adams this last year. He's done it with Hunter Renfro. He's had Darren Waller be relevant. But he isn't he isn't coming in and solving problems and making Chris Olave the you know a top five wide receiver. This is another middling average quarterback that is just going to be more of the same. I want to follow up, though, on the dilemma that you faced that we went through on that show, which was you or, or a couple shows ago. You were in a best ball draft, and you were mm. staring down DeAndre mm -hmm. Hopkins, and you were staring down Chris Olave. And on the show, we talked about the fact that you went with Hopkins. Mike, you were part of that decision-making. Yep. I just was curious if this news had any impact on any regret from that decision. It, it didn't. It didn't uh, because I assumed that the Saints would have any kind of veteran. I, I did not see the Saints as someone that was going to be trading up to have a rookie starting this year. And that's where, you know, if Derek, if you're talking about Derek Carr versus, um, you know, a Kenny Pickett style uh, team where, you know, there's not going to be a lot of yardage. That would have been a huge negative for Chris Olave, but instead, whether it was Garoppolo or Carr or Dalton, 
this to me didn't make a huge difference and we'll have to see where DeAndre Hopkins playing football next year before we know if that was a good pick or not yeah that'll be I mean yeah you get a new quarterback in New Orleans you're going to probably have a new team for DeAndre Hopkins uh Cardinals plus 2500 to win the West <laughs> let's go Cardinals that's uh that's it's generous. Yeah, well, I mean, I think once they lost Chosen Anderson. Oh, yeah. They, uh, who they're going to part ways with. That would be Robbie Anderson, which was he has Rob changed. B. Yeah. Anderson. Yes, we went from the Y to the IE. Now we were at Chosen Anderson. And mm -hmm. Steve Keim, uh, former manager, general manager of the Cardinals, he chose to take two draft picks and just set them on fire. Set them ablaze. Um. So his name is now released, Anderson. Is that right? They're going to part ways with him. Yeah, he'll be. I mean, he'll land on a team. Um, I would think. I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's franchise tag news. So here's what we know right now. Uh, the, this show is uh, being released on Tuesday, and the 4 p.m. Eastern time is the deadline. Cowboys are using it on Tony Pollard. Which puts a lot of money oh, yes, it at the running back position. And this comes off the heels of McCarthy talking about how, oh, Kellen Moore's, Kellen Moore's a great oh, man. offensive coordinator, but he's just an offensive coordinator. He wants to score the most points. I want to win the most games. Basically what he was saying was that he wanted to give his defense a break on the field. He thinks that's better for winning games versus just trying to, you know, outscore his opponent. And that means running the ball. That That's literally what it means. The difference between scoring a ton means of points. trying to run the ball. Sure. Well, Tony Pollard's going to help, um, you know. In, yeah, they can run it. And Schottenheimer is also the kind of hire you make when running the football is what you want to do. You have another mind in the room with McCarthy that just loves running the football in order to give that elite defense the opportunity. He came out and basically said, look, we turn the ball over too much. I mean, that was part of it. It's like you give – we want slow drives, give the defense a break. So if they keep Zeke, though, they'll have $27 million of the cap at the running back position. And there are talks of Zeke being cut. Yeah. But it, that would kind of fly in the face of what we're – you know, maybe well, what McCarthy wants to do with a – a tandem. So I, I, I don't know if Pollard can hold up alone. I think that it, it's more speaking to Zeke is they're going to have to restructure the contract, get that, get the money down. Destructure. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that Zeke and Pollard will be the running backs there, but and Zeke will take a pay cut to do it. It's his best chance at making the most money. Because yes. if you just straight that, yes. cut him, he's getting such a smaller amount. And yeah, for those asking, well, why would you ever do that? Because the new contract you go get for a different team will probably be less than what you could still get with with a lower amount this year. All right, let's get let's get to this next bit of news. Schmevin Schmingram, <laughs> yeah, baby. Jacksonville has placed the franchise tag on Evan Ingram. Not willing to make a long term commitment. Neither are we, but we'll make a one year commitment. Or, or Evan Ingram is trying to break the bank. I mean, he had a tremendous year. And he's probably asking for more, and they still have time to negotiate for a long-term deal. They're just they're putting the franchise on him to guarantee that he would be on the team this year. Other players expected to re uh, receive the franchise tag if no deal is reached by today. Josh Jacobs of the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you. They, what would his fifth-year option have been? Uh, it's two million in difference. Two? Yeah, is it two million so dollars difference? Two, he'll get two more now. He'll get two more, which. In running back contract terms, that's a lot of money. It's not. That's why it's funny to me. I mean, it, yeah, it, it's one of those things where, yes, it looks really stupid now for the Raiders. And I would be happy to pile. If we want to pile on that, you're done. Let's go. But here's another perspective. You did get to see whether he could be this. Mm -hmm. You took a chance. It was a, it was a $2 million gamble to take this chance and find out whether you have a truly – you know, top 10 type of running back. And they were humble enough to play him and not move on from him last year. Like we kept the reason he was one of the biggest misses in fantasy was because all the money, follow the money, follow the money, decline the fifth year option, draft Zemir White, you know, play him in the Hall of Fame bring, game, play him in the Hall of Fame game, and then bring in Brandon Bolden. And you're like, well, this team's actions are telling me they're ready to move on. And I think it does say something that they were willing to say, oh, wow. 
okay, you're way better than everybody else in this room. If we have to pay you more next year, I guess that's what we're doing. I mean, I, he's yeah. really, really good, and he's going to be back on the Raiders. And uh, and you could also even make the argument that if it wasn't for the fact that he didn't have a contract, he might not have <laughs> played as well. You that's know, not, that's true. People oh, on contract. I'm not. I'm not oh, putting man. that on Josh Jacobs. It's I'm not saying nature. he did, but you it is just a, did. No, I'm saying it's a possibility. <laughs> I'm not saying he did do that. You remember Kenny Galladay that uh, final the, year there, and you know, there's there's some players who play a little bit different when they're on a contract year, and you you know, I am playing for my future contract right now. Would you, if you play got different? One, so you're out on Josh Jacobs now. No, he's on a contract year no. now. He's back on a contract. This is great. Would you play different? Long-term deal? I think there would probably be slight moments You show of up a little later to practice? I don't think it's that so much. Like it's, it's maybe a business decision on here the or there on the field. Yeah. Okay. You're like, maybe I run that guy over. Maybe I don't. Maybe I step out of bounds. Yeah. Or maybe I get a couple extra dollars on this contract. Alvin Kamara pled not guilty to the uh, conspiracy to commit battery and substantial bodily harm. Uh, this was a uh, it's a felony charge. His trial set for July 31st. His discipline would come this upcoming year if uh, found guilty. It's not great. Yeah, Kamara is going to be buried in drafts. He is. He's I, and and I've I have not yet drafted him in any best ball draft just because I I really don't know where to land on that, but he is tumbling and falling. And um, I think the expectation right now for fantasy managers is that he will miss some time this year. Uh, the range would be between one and six games, uh, usually for this type of an occurrence. And uh, Allen Robinson has been. <laughs> <laughs> can't say it with a straight face the rams have given now did can the rams give permission with a straight face is the real question they've given Allen robinson permission to seek a trade look it's not you it's us but why don't you go find yourself a new team don't worry about money we will take care of the money I mean, they basically just just get off just of our team. leave <laughs> they're saying they're willing oh, to cover man. a portion of his guaranteed salary oh man he turns 30 in august his yards per out run is, have declined for three straight years. All the preseason highlight videos have been, uh, from what I understand, completely destroyed. I mean, they took all of those tapes and they burnt them. Sean McVay doesn't even remember having a conversation with him. Yeah, the, uh, I hope that the other 31 teams do not listen to the episode of Things to Remember. What's lost is not going to be found. He's toast. And so maybe someone will trade for him. I don't think anyone will, though, right? I don't know, man. The NFL, they have a, a lot of these guys have very strong belief in themselves to there's turn one, careers around. There's one team. Oh. Chicago. Uh, Come on back. I I don't think I don't nah. think Chicago. They don't have anybody, is my point. Yeah, but they saw him firsthand. He knows somebody in, yeah. in the uh, – yeah, they did. They did see him firsthand. All right, the NFL has reinstated Jacksonville uh, wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Let's go, baby. And um, any other takeaways from the combine you guys want to mention before we move on? Lots of takeaways from the combine. I mean, we, we talked about some of the wide receivers weighed in a little less than we hope, and we just talked about that on yep. things to remember is that the weight for wide receivers is moving down as far as successful wide receivers in the NFL. Uh, but I was a little disappointed in that. Obviously, the big, I think the – the biggest yes. storyline is Anthony Richardson. Agreed. Who, uh, quarterback out of Florida, who's gone from a late first round pick to now, I saw two post combine legitimate, um, respectable mock drafts that had a team trading up to number one to select Anthony Richardson. I don't think he's going to go over Bryce Young in this draft, but that's what the conversation is. When we talk about the combine affecting fantasy, it's because the combine affects the NFL. Yeah. And, and legitimately so like Anthony Richardson he isn't you know people talk about oh Malik Willis last year was this athletic quarterback that you know wasn't very accurate what's different this is nowhere near this the, this is not an athletic guy this isn't Paxton Lynch with a big strong arm who's inaccurate this is a freak of nature he's literally the most athletic quarterback in the history of combine testing he's heavier than Cam runs faster than Cam jumps higher than any quarterback has ever jumped it, as just an athlete he's 
he's the new perfection of what the best quarterback athlete could be. So yeah, he's got a lot of holes in his quarterback game. Um, but those are, you know, Mike just talked about these teams feel like I believe in myself and my ability to, to fix a player and you cannot teach hundredth, someone hundredth percentile athleticism, right? He's there, uh, the pinnacle And there's a lot. I think part of it is that how many teams are desperate to fix that position that haven't been able to fix it. Indianapolis is going to find their way to a quarterback this year. And I don't think it's rehash number four. I don't. I don't think it's, you know, they've done the wins, the Rivers, the Brissett, and uh, Matt Ryan. I think they end up with a rookie quarterback here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the Jets are looking for one. The Saints finally found one. But, you know, there are some other teams in the mix. Seattle's got a higher draft pick than people can. I mean, if they don't keep Geno Smith, Houston, Las Vegas, Carolina. The, yeah, the two teams that I think are not being talked about enough are sitting there at five and six in this draft with the Seattle Seahawks. I mean, they, they could absolutely grab – they could re-sign Geno and draft Anthony Richardson as a developed prospect, and then you've got the, a similar situation with the Lions where you, right. you've got a great offensive line, great weapons, and you've got Goff there. Grab Anthony Richardson to, to develop for the future. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of people want, you know, fairly to push back against, you know, combine hype. It takes over Twitter. It takes over the, you know, the headlines. And all the athletic numbers are true, and there's a lot more to playing the quarterback position than just winning the combine. But when you have an opportunity to maybe take the next Cam Newton or the next Lamar Jackson or the Josh next Allen. Josh Allen, you you have to do it. And I think Richardson did enough to where, it was, like you said, it's nothing like Malik Willis. Richardson's sheer athleticism and ability, if he's in the right system, is going to have a great opportunity to succeed. And you, if you look at the historical uh, quarterback position, you know, with these running quarterbacks and what it translates into fantasy football with opportunity, mm -hmm. it's not like a 50-50 shot. It's 100%. It's like they all, you know, could you have had a worse passing, reading the defense, getting sacked type of season than Justin Fields had as a rookie? A worse scenario for him? No. That I mean, and 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 that then, tape against the his first game against the Cleveland Browns was one of the the most epic disasters that I, th I think of any game tape. If you watch a, a poor quarterback performance, that was worse. And so my point is that that's the that's kind of the basement for an Anthony Richardson season at this point. Is he starts bad like Justin Fields started in Chicago? But the draft capital now will necessitate a commitment by a team to make them their his. He's going to be the future and be given the opportunity to be the future. And, and with that will come fantasy football production guaranteed with that level of speed. Yeah, from a fantasy size. football perspective and yeah. just fantasy, you you you're going to make the same decision in your drafts that the NFL is going to make. Like, do you want to go in on the potential? Yeah, it could it could be worse. Bryce Young looks safe, but Bryce Young's ceiling. Okay, maybe you say it's Drew Brees. Well, that would be that would be great for fantasy football, but that is the you know the biggest outlier of all time for that. If for a pocket passer, you're hoping that you know he turns into a Kirk Cousins plus type of player. And for fantasy, that's never going to get it done compared to a guy who's a true dual threat who could rush for double digit touchdowns on the ground and 800 rushing yards. That breaks fantasy football. So. If he goes in the top 10 of the NFL draft, which it seems now almost like a certainty, how is he not the first quarterback that we are drafting out of this rookie class for fantasy? He will be for me. Man. Yeah, he will be for me too, assuming he goes. I think he goes number three in the draft. I do. I think Anthony Richardson goes three. That would be awesome because that's a Cardinals pick. And, and just so that we actually tell you what happened. Not the Cardinals Not picking. that everybody – no, the Cardinals won't pick it. Right. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, quarterback combine ranks since two, 2003. Anthony Richardson, this is how he, he stacked up. 40-yard dash, he ran a 4-4-4. That was second best since 2003 at, at the quarterback position. Was, Griffin was higher, right? RG3. Yeah. Uh, broad jump was uh, best ever. or uh, Sorry, best since 2003. Um, and then vertical jump over 40 inches. Uh, best since 2003. So, I'm pretty close on that one. You are? Yeah. 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 Just a few feet. Yeah. <laughs> They're a very small like, number if you I'm go just, by feet. I'm just saying, like, if, yeah, if you if you make the uh, – if you transfer it into feet, then I'm, yeah. I'm pretty close. 
Yeah, if you transfer it to percentage of a mile, yeah, right. we have You're very similar numbers. Almost no difference. <laughs> There's almost no perceivable. Yeah. I, look, I measure in metric, mm-hmm. so that's it's yeah. this whole thing. Yeah, you know, all, what, I don't want to get into yeah, it. but I just, I'm really athletic. Uh-huh. Huh. And you just turned 40, right? So that's yes. impressive. Yes. Because Richards is probably about, not, about half not that. Not 40. <laughs> um, all right, anything else from the combine you want to mention real quick before I uh, move forward? I mean, I mean like, we'll bring it I up. Talk I think. forever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, a a chain is small, but some like I think he weighed in a little bit larger. Devin a chain running back out of Texas A and M. Gibbs was a little Gibbs, disappointing Gibbs, to not get the two hundred pounds. Yeah, he was at one ninety nine, but he was very very fast. He's I still really I, like him. Like J- Jameer Gibbs is is Just needed to spend some time with Jason's uh, clinic. Yeah, yeah, come on down, man. <laughs> Let me he, show you how to eat a burger. He has a. Oh, I thought you maybe held it at the local IHOP. He is fascinating. Talking about Gibbs because it's like, is he going to be Jamal Charles or is he going to be CJ Spiller? And those are, I think, pretty, two pretty fair comps for him as in terms of of uh, size and just you know electric speed. S- Spiller had. A year where he was fantastic, but really just one year for fantasy football, and and Jamal Charles is fantasy football Hall of Fame. So well, let's see the draft capital. He's probably a day two pick, but does he make it into the second round? All right, quick break, and then we are going to dive into free agency predictions. Yeah, I guess that would make Mike's breakout age forty. So, yeah, that's a little later than you want to see from an analyst in terms of a breakout age. It's the zeroth percentile. Zeroth? Yes. Zeroth percentile. But at the same time, you know, there's an opportunity for success. Here. Better is late that, than never. Is that is it a TH on a zero? I don't know. Or is, I mean, it wouldn't be zeroist. <laughs> <laughs> zeroist? Zeroist. I don't know. I, don't, I threw it in there to make it sound no, more I formal. No, I like it. I like it a lot. But I'm just curious if there's an official... You know, I am very curious. Now. Yeah, answer. Yeah, there has to be. It's got to be. Th- it's it's. There is no th. <laughs> no, right. If can, you're a complete zero, you can't have a. You're not a percentage of anything. It's got to be right because zero. Th- or is you it, normally say like, it, is it an nd? Is it zero? Zero. Zero. Kyle, it's zero. Th- oh yeah, right! we <laughs> did it. Good job, Mike. So you're in the zero th percentile. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Congrats. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's see if you can uh, back up your free agency predictions. Free agent frenzy. <laughs> you ready to make some free agency predictions? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, good, because that's what we're going to do. Do you want to go over a little bit of the offseason um, vocabulary, or should we just jump in? Um, I, I, I feel like most people at this point understand the difference between, um, you know, a, a, a cap hit. That's not necessarily what a player is getting paid, but what it counts against in a certain year for the cap. Some people are front loaded, back loaded, um, dead money. If you cut a player, you still have to account for their cap space from the contract you signed that will be left over onto these, uh, teams rosters. And then, okay. The way that the the timeline's going to go, uh, the franchise tag deadline will be today, uh, Monday the thirteenth. The legal tampering period begins. The <laughs> fake free agency begins. How is this the name that we have all just we've accepted it? You're like, yep, legal tampering. Like, yeah, I mean, it is a it's, weird. It's a weird thing. Why use the negative? Whenever you call anything legal, anything, <laughs> it's followed by a word that in- insinuates something. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, devious is happening. Yeah. How about open negotiations? There I don't know. That like, sounds nice. Legal tampering. Yeah, that would so be like if, like if like stuff was free in a store, and the <laughs> next day it's not free. So the first day is legal stealing. Yeah, right. It's what are we doing here? Uh, but, uh, but I don't. I don't know if we have enough power to move that away. But then on Wednesday the fifteenth. Actual free agency will open up next week. Our Thursday show will cover the entire week of tampering, of uh, real <laughs> contracts being legal, signed. illegal. Yeah, all illicit, uh, just just all sorts of uh, contracts going on. Tampering talk. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the teams with the most cap space heading into free agency: the Bears, ninety-eight million dollars; Atlanta with sixty-six million; 
the Raiders at 46. I mean, that's it's kind of wild what the Bears have because they almost have double what the third highest cap space Trust team the process. Has. It's worth noting that with the Bears, there is a minimum cap. We don't talk about that a lot. Right. There is a minimum salary that teams have to spend, and that is calculated over a three-year period. So you can technically spend less than the minimum in a certain year, which the Bears did this past season. So they actually So they have, average it. They, yeah, they average it over three years. So the Bears have to, by rule, spend a ton of money. They have to get their three-year average up to the minimum, which they are below. They have a ton of cap space. So when you talk about, like, when there was all this, oh, they're going to trade uh, Justin Fields and draft Bryce Young because of the – For the, their window. Yeah, for the, the window and the window. contract. I'm like, they kind of need to pay Justin Fields. Like, they have to. Okay. So then the Giants are fourth in terms of for, most cap for space now. for now. Uh, yeah, that, that'll that change quickly if they, uh, if they lock up Daniel Mr. Jones. Daniel Jones. Which there is some momentum, at least as of this recording. We're recording uh, Monday afternoon, by the way. These are always, you know, it's a podcast. We record the show. We're not on live with you all the time. So news is going to break that we don't hear about until the next episode, and that's just this part of the year. And then the Patriots, Bengals both have $36 million. Um, All right, let's get into it. Quarterbacks. We were going to predict the... Destination of Derek Carr. Saints. I went Saints, Saints. as well. I yeah. got it in first. Hundred percent hit rate. Dang. All right, but we don't have to do that anymore. Yep. So let's talk about what we expect from the Daniel Jones situation. Giants. We all agree it's the Giants. <laughs> okay. yeah, well, they're going to tag him. Yeah, they've they've said they will franchise tag him should they not get the deal. But they would not have it available for Saquon then. I know that's. I so think they're that's, in a real pickle. They that it's a twofer. If you can get Daniel Jones under contract. You're going to tag am, Saquon Barkley. I have the mental picture right now of like, you know when you've got like multiple uh, people you brought in for questioning at the, you know, like at a police op, uh, police are we, station? Are we talking interrogation? Yeah, okay. interrogation room. I just feel like they've got like Saquon in one and Daniel Jones in one. <laughs> okay. And there's one guy walking between them. And he says a few things. So, he's like, okay, hold on. All Saquon right. told us. Yeah. And <laughs> that you were going to play for this. Are we close money. here? Are we not close here? What about this contract? Okay, hold 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 on a second. I'm gonna go to the other room. But there were some rumors about Bijan and the Giants. Oh, oh come on! Have you on. not seen that? I have not seen that. New I mean, York. every every possible rumor right now. <laughs> I'm back. Is like it's Jason's. Me. Jason's and Dave. <laughs> is there a team you can even be happy with at this point? There, I'm gonna be happy with wh whoever drafts him because his talent is good enough. Detroit. I mean, there, it made some sense to me. Well, sure, you don't I have mean, to pay Saquon. You got a young, uh, a young Saquon. You the, know? Yeah. The the thing is about the franchise tag. I mean, we saw that with Tony Pollard. It's only ten million dollars for the franchise tag for the running back position. So it's actually yeah. It, like if they sign Daniel Jones or something and throw that tag on Barkley, it's not fair to Barkley, but it's a great deal for the Giants. First official prediction. Then let's go with Lamar Jackson. I think he's back in Baltimore. That's my final answer. So they will certainly tag him. I'm gonna say that I I'm starting oh, to believe he sits man. out. I'm going to say that he sits out because he's going to hold his ground on a fully guaranteed contract because he knows for sure that he could get that on the open market. Like, of course he could. D Deshaun Watson got it on the open market, and he's not as good well, and carried so much baggage. Market. He was traded. Well, even even all the more reason. I mean, he didn't even have the entirety of the league to go, um, you know, get a deal. So I, I'm going to say that Lamar Jackson does not play. I had put in... Before I saw your guys' answer, of, uh, I think it's Baltimore or the couch. Oh, a little hedge there. Well, as I'm saying. He thinks I'd... one of us is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm leaving it. <laughs> okay. That means uh, either everyone's wrong so no, nobody, or I'm right. <laughs> just for the sake of not arguing with you about that ridiculousness, none of us thinks he's going to end up on another team this year. Mm, I don't. And no. so, you know, the, that situation would be – you know, if he doesn't get the extension with Baltimore and he does sit out, it's going to be next year that we'd be dealing with his destination. Yeah, very similar to what happened with Le'Veon Bell. And, you know, it is one of those situations like Melvin where Melvin Gordon, too? Uh, he set so. out a – I think he uh, was a bunch of – He missed some, he miss games. some games. That's what it was, yeah. yep. Um, but, I, uh, you know, 
And then the guy behind him was was way better. <laughs> there's whoops. <laughs> there's a lot of teams <laughs> out there that are looking to trade so much draft capital to move up and select one of these rookies. I have to imagine every single one of those teams is calling Baltimore and yes. saying, "Look, I'll give you three firsts for Lamar, and he's going to sit out. You're not going to have him this year. Grab three firsts. Let me pay him the full contract." I don't know. I would be doing that if it's, I was a GM. What's uh, how old is Baltimore? Or how old is Baltimore? <laughs> how old is the city? How old is the city of Baltimore? No, Lamar is uh, twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. Baltimore so is two hundred and ninety three years old. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I really wanted to yeah. know. Seventeen twenty nine. That's been around a while. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Geno Smith. We're all agreed. We think he's back in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yep. I uh, think that's an easy. It's one. funny because if he's not like if, like I guess like what you brought up. It's probably going to be both. If they take a quarterback, they'll just bring Geno in. But if for some reason he wasn't back at Seattle, I have no idea if Geno Smith is a starter somewhere. Yeah, it, he, he doesn't should. feel like he's a guaranteed starter. Absolutely, it doesn't. I don't think he that other be. teams are wowed by him, and he's not in the situation in his career where you're going to bring him into a new franchise and feel like, well, we've we got our young buck. Uh, you, you know, he's 32 years old and he's had one good year but that year was sensational he, he led the nfl in completion percentage he had the fourth most passing touchdowns he was great he was I mean, great yeah I, I if he's not a starter that's that would be ridiculous there's with all the teams that could use a bridge quarterback uh, that being said dk metcalf tyler lockett they made russell wilson look good so <laughs> i mean yeah, oh man oh man <laughs> that's a funny narrative to me oh man <laughs> Yeah, they do. Uh, they take care of their quarterbacks. Maybe anybody will work. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is uh, the first quarterback prediction that we actually have a difference of opinion on. Why don't you guys go first? Well, we have it the same. Um, yeah. The Jets are a destination that I think it fits so perfectly. I was saying earlier this offseason when they were talking about maybe going and getting Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo is a more affordable version who has – been a winner with well-constructed teams. This team is well-constructed. I think their best bet would be to get Jimmy Garoppolo. He can run this offense good enough for that great defense to to just keep winning games. Yeah, does his, does his uh, head coach like him? Because, I mean, that would be a, a reunion, a San Francisco reunion up in New York. Yeah, there'd be another reunion. That's the team I'm going with, and that would be Las Vegas, the Raiders. I think, it, I think the Raiders are either going to – figure out how to get Aaron Rodgers or it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, Josh McDaniels has always talked better do that quick talk very fondly of, uh, of Jimmy G. And so I think Las Vegas will be that, uh, that destination. Um, shall we move on to some running back predictions? Yes. Please. Saquon Barkley. We do not all agree here. Mike and I have him back in New York with yeah. the giants. Jason taking the, leap here i am taking the leap and obviously this one will be the first one to blow back in in someone's face because if daniel jones gets contract done in short order then they will franchise barkley and he'll be back for the giants but should they not get that done and they can't use that franchise tag i think they're too far away in the money and a team with a lot of cap space that wants to run the ball the atlanta falcons to Just me would be a disrespect my would man would be a perfect algier Look, Algiers fine. He he showed like he, he shows up to work. He can be a good a good backup to Saquon, but <laughs> so ridiculous. Look, Arthur wants his Derrick Henry that he had in Tennessee. He He's wants a him. superstar. <laughs> he does not have a superstar running back. He made Cordero Patterson look really good. Tyler Algier look really good. He's got to believe if we could get Saquon Barkley, this offense will thrive. I don't know if that's true, but I believe he believes that. All right, then we're moving on to Kareem Hunt, who will be a free agent. We all have different destinations for Kareem Hunt. Stupid Cleveland Browns. Um, yeah, seriously. What I'm are you so mad at them? They suck. So, like, I mean, I was already upset with them from the Deshaun Watson garbage, but to, to have Kareem Hunt, teams wanted him. Teams wanted to trade for him. You could have gotten draft capital immediately. Maybe you – Got the second. I know they can still get the uh, like a third rounder, the compensatory pick, but like you didn't even use him then after the trade deadline. It's ridiculous. Well, uh, we all have a different potential home for Kareem Hunt. 
I'm going to go with a. Uh, I'm gonna go with Baltimore. You go okay. for Kareem Hunt as a compliment. They need. Uh, they need another runner in the backfield. They they like having can Kareem Hunt and J.K. Dobbins three legged race so that they have two very strong legs. It it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, Kareem's got I think Kareem's got enough to spare off of one of the legs to <laughs> they just, they put him in a workout plan where it's just squats with with his, with the right leg. I don't even know which one it needs to be, but <laughs> um, I like the idea I, of that. I, I think the I think Baltimore's running back room is is uh, pr pretty solid they right now. They love old and, guys. <laughs> but they do love old guys. That that's the thing is that you've seen them bring in some of these retreads when they had injuries, so I that makes sense to me. But the other team we've seen do that the Broncos, who just brought in Latavius Murray and some of these guys because they want the veteran to hold down the fort, uh, that's where I've got Kareem Hunt going. They We've talked about this with Alexander Madison. They really need a running back while Javante is getting healthy. Kareem Hunt has the skill set to be kind of what they had in Melvin Gordon before Melvin Gordon kind of aged out. Mike? And I am calling the shot of... I think there's enough smoke of Joe Mixon being released by the Cincinnati Bengals for cap room. And then with both Joseph Mixon and uh, Samaj P. Ryan off the team, I think Kareem Hunt would fit in very, very well with what the Cincinnati Bengals are trying one, to do. One year deal? Yeah, one or two. Just I mean, just a, a real cheap deal. And Kareem Hunt has enough left that he's a sensational pass catcher. He fits their offense. I genuinely think he signs a one or two year deal. I mean, that's a yeah, for, that's for sure. Matters. Yeah, I, I I would agree with that. And I I do think that you're you're both onto something a little bit staying in division because he's going to be like freaking Browns. <laughs> you guys suck. It's possible. Yeah, had you you didn't use me for a whole Pull year. His own you could have Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Miles Sanders. Just twenty five years old. Part of the committee of backs in Philadelphia. We all have him moving on out of Philly. Uh, Jason, why don't we start with you? I'm going to go with another team like the Falcons that want to run the ball, are built to run the ball, but need a slightly better running back than what they have on the roster. That's Carolina Panthers. They, I, I believe they re-signed Deontay Foreman as well and have kind of a their own little committee here of quality backs. And uh, Carolina, I, th I think he could succeed there. I am going to make Jason frustrated. Yeah, I saw that. I'm going to go with the New York Jets. <laughs> How dare you? How <laughs> dare you touch my breeze? That would not be just Jason getting the Twitter will explode if if a running back with the pedigree and the age of Miles Sanders ends up with the Jets. We we will lose our minds appropriately. This is a big table, but I can flip it. <laughs> and this would be one of those things that would cause me to do so. Yeah, I think there's a level of in, uh, frustration at what the result was last year once Brees Hall went down. They did not have a next man up in New York for that running back room. They tried with... Uh, Zonovan. Bam Knight. Yeah, Bam Knight. What was it? Bam Knight, it was... Uh, Trying to remember I mean, the Michael two Carter's more backs, Michael there. Carter and, they, they and James Robinson. James Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> so they they tried Whoops. they tried three different names. Obviously, Brees Hall's their future. He would still be the workhorse, but it will take him time to get back. And I'm going with a team that t keeps trying over and over and over to find their solution at the running back position. And I'm not sure that it is James Cook. For the Buffalo Bills, even though they drafted him very high because they wanted that pass catching running back desperately, but they need a hammer, and I think that Miles Sanders could fit that role uh, perfectly. Which they're, you know, I guess the, there's not actual rumors of Derrick Henry to the Buffalo Bills, but there are rumors. We didn't mention it, but that there's rumors that Derrick Henry is being uh, floated in trade offers, and if you want a hammer, <laughs> yeah, I mean. But I, I, am, so I, I mean, like Miles Sanders fits what the Buffalo Bills need, a, a, a reliable guy who can carry the ball a whole bunch. He's pretty good at the goal line. I think he's going to be too expensive for them. That's my concern. Like, I think he's going to be – he's the perfect running back to end up on a team with more cap space and less um, – Wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I've got the Falcons and Panthers as my two running back destinations. Uh, 
it's a little bit of like what happened with Christian Kirk. Not worth what he got paid in Jacksonville. That's just my opinion. David Montgomery, we all have him going back to Chicago. So yeah. no boring. Changes. Like we said, they have to spend money. Let's talk about wide receivers. A lot of wide receiver needy teams. Um, we are going to start with Juju. Juju Smith-Schuster. Another one-year deal. I think he's the second best wide receiver in free agency available. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I get it. I get it. I, I, Man, that's tough. I, I guess I'm thinking if I'm a general manager, would I rather have Juju Smith-Schuster or would I rather have Jacoby Myers? They play similar roles. They play them differently, but it would be taking the same role. I would probably take whoever costs less. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Juju, I'm going to go with Kansas City. I think he comes back again. I think Kansas City wants him back. And um, I was tempted to do some wild stuff here. Um, Baltimore was a potential home, obviously, but so was a reun reunification in Pittsburgh uh, that I thought about hap Man. having happen. Um, That'd be wild. I, I do have him going to Baltimore. I okay. think it makes a lot of yeah, sense. Of he flirted with them last year. Um, the Baltimore Ravens desperately, desperately need wide receiver help, and there's not a bigger name in free agency than Juju. So uh, that's where I've got him landing. And I have him going down to Atlanta to compliment Mr. Drake London. You have your gigantic man. Now get a, get a qualified slot wide receiver in there. By the way, the, it was on record in this. Uh, I saw you make a note here, Kyle, that Mike is the reigning champion in free agency Which prediction. I do not remember. But you didn't put any proof. Yeah, there was no proof. There was no proof. Also, he makes no evidence. He makes picks like uh, what either Andy or Jason said. I get pumped. Oh, I no, see. No, I said I was in first, and you both copied me. Baltimore or the couch, Mike? <sighs> Baltimore. All right. Uh, Jacoby Myers on the couch. Uh, is the wide receiver. <laughs> That's the city he's going to be sitting on the couch in. Jacoby Myers, who I think is the best free agent wide receiver, and I have him being the target of Baltimore, who you had Juju going to. I think he ends up in Baltimore, and I think he gets paid more than people think he deserves. Yeah, that, that could definitely happen. I believe the Titans who have just released Robert Woods are trying to get someone who is – what Robert Woods used to be, and that is Jacoby Myers. I do. I like the Titans a lot, but I didn't want to match, so I'm going out on a limb here, and I think that it's possible the Houston Texans, they need to they need to rebuild from the ground up. Why not make a, a splash for whoever your young quarterback ends up being, get him a, a, a solid wide receiver. I agree. Jac Jacoby's a, a good player. He will really help a football team, so I got him down for the Houston Texans. And then we're gonna we're gonna take shots with DJ Chark and Alan Lazard. For DJ Chark, I'm going with Atlanta. So I'm gonna put him in Atlanta. Um It makes sense. Jason? I'm going to actually go with the Bills. <laughs> oh my god. You coward. Oh you changed. My gosh. You had the Giants in. I'm telling people. I, I did <laughs> oh, have man. the Giants in. No, but uh I I'm flipping that with the next player we're gonna talk about. The Bills, I think, would get a cheap deal and can sell DJ Chark on his skill set being utilized so well. I don't well mind that pick. That's with a good Josh pick. Allen. And I think he'd be cheap. It'd be like a one year. Yeah. And I've got DJ Chark going to the Cowboys. They, I think they messed up pretty bad when they traded away Amari Cooper for nothing and they gambled on Michael Gallup. And that team, they need speed. And DJ Chark can, he can provide, he can provide. that. Um, Alan Lazard. The final wide receiver we're going to predict today, Mike. This is your your Ravens guy. Yeah, this uh, I think it, it matches up. Alan Lazard may not be like the most technically sat. Like maybe Juju can make some sexier plays, but it's like when it comes to a well-rounded wide receiver who can be on the field and do dirty work when it's cold and rainy and muddy in Baltimore, and you need a gigantic wide receiver who can be a top tier blocker on the field as well as make I mean he made tons of really big plays for Aaron Rodgers I think that it makes sense for him. he won't break the bank I don't wait I don't know that Baltimore is willing to pay up for someone like Jacoby Myers so I got Alan Lazard going there yeah I've, I've got him going to the Giants I think that well-rounded run blocking um, combination would would work there as well especially being a little cheaper since they're still Probably paying a lot of cap space for Kenny Galladay. <laughs>
Yeah, and I have him going to the Texans. I think he'll be the Texans' overpay this offseason. His identity, Fair. his identity is that blocking, tough nosed. Uh, it fits yeah, with it, what they're going to do on offense. It makes sense. Um, and then, uh, do you want to take a shot at Beckham? Just out of the dark here. <laughs> do, I mean, Beckham. Some people have him as the best free agent available. He's thirty years old. Tells you what the free agent class Man, is like. I have. I had deleted him from from my mind, but. Yeah, it makes sense of considering what like what week did uh did he take hold of the headlines last year was every single week he's going to be ready. Where is he going to go? He's going to be ready. And then he was not ready. But see, I would have I would the low hanging fruit would have been Dallas for me, but with the offensive identity changing, I don't know if the risk reward right. on the the locker room and you know, everybody loves him as a player, but then, you know, a lot of headlines have been associated with OBJ. I don't think he's going to be Dallas. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at some teams here. I think the Titans, uh, I know Titans, Titans are going to re rebuild. I'll throw mine in. I'm Kansas gonna, City. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go Stupid pick. with the Los no, Angeles <laughs> Rams. He's back after they <laughs> no. are able to trade away <laughs> Allen Robinson. The Rams. Yeah. Okay. Um guess I need to pick one, don't I? He's going to be he's going to chase a ring. <sighs> And the Rams yeah. is not the right place to do that right I, now. I'm going to go with the play. I'm going to go with the the Raiders. He's gonna he's gonna chase a ring. He will be with the Raiders. With the Raiders? No, Who's, no, no. Uh, do you have no? You don't. If have Rogers a, ends up in in Las Vegas, okay, that yeah, it could happen. Um, then then Beckham could could go and hang out with Devontae. All right, one tight end we're going to predict: Dalton Schultz. Uh, th we all have kind of a, an overpay coming from the Texans because they have to, to lure free agents. And to me, it's going to be Dalton Schultz, uh, a rookie quarterback's best friend is his tight end. And this will be the Austin Hooper type of situation. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, that makes me so sad. Cause I was looking, I'm like, this is going to, it's going to be Hooper again. There's so, always a Hooper. It's someone's going to overpay. He's going to go to a system and. It probably won't work out. Uh, I Th feel like those are the things I was thinking through when I was like, "Oh yeah, the Texans. yeah, the Houston Texans." Okay. It makes sense. Uh, the Detroit Lions—they need a tight end, and they decided it was not T.J. Hawkinson. Maybe they decide that they'll give Dalton Schultz way too much money. And I'm going to go with Dallas. I think they find a way to make it happen. <sighs> They're going to have hmm. to find some some dollars hidden under some cushions. Yeah, they may be uh, dollars with Zeke's face on it. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think the, I think the only way that that can happen is if his open market isn't there, it, you know, because obviously they're they've, they're not franchising him; they franchise Pollard. If he tests the open market and it's very lukewarm, cold on him, then yeah, I, th I think Dalton Schultz would like to be in Dallas. I think Dallas would like Dalton Schultz absolutely, but so, money talks. Yep, and uh, if there is a team out there willing to hooper him, as they say, yeah. If he's going to get Hooper, he's going to take the Hooper money. Who's going to Hooper Hooper? Mm. Hooper began it, so he was the first Hooper. <laughs> well, I'm saying, but he's he's available. Oh, that's true. Yeah, who, he's back on the market. Uh, <laughs> I don't actually care. He can go back. Uh, he can go back to Atlanta. <laughs> they do. The, they how, do need a good tight end there. How about the DC Defenders. The That's XFL. Oh, I was like, they're they're the Manders. You've been Jason. watching a lot of XFL. Jason? Nope, <laughs> no, I've seen I've seen, seen some. a couple Josh Gordon highlights. Yeah, yes, that was that was bo that was so awesome because one, it's Wait, so cool to see there? Josh Gordon. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, he had this what? big bomb touchdown. Guys couldn't tackle him. It was so funny to me because one, it's awesome. It's Josh Gordon being awesome, and two. He was pretty slow. And oh, like, no. He didn't look like he was anything special, but these guys couldn't tackle him because they're not that good. <laughs> I mean, it just was like evidence to me of like, oh, yeah, this is. Yeah. This is. What could have been? A couple tears yes, down. What Josh Gordon been. was real, real good. He was ahead in, of his time. In Cleveland. <laughs> he was ahead of his time. <laughs> Speaking of legal, legal tampering <laughs> and. Him and Martavis Bryant yeah. just needed to come in the league about five years later and they would have had careers. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else we need to cover here at the end? UltimateDraftKit.com. If you want to get a pre-order in on the 2023 UDK, you get some uh, perks, like $15 in uh, basically gift certificates. <laughs> I don't think I I've like, ever called them that before. And I like how it's basically. <laughs> 
basically you get fifteen dollars a gift because that is in fact what you get. <laughs> basically, you're gonna kind of get, get gift these- certificates. <laughs> Uh, what do I normally say? I, it's, I'm blank. Fifteen dollars in gift cards. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so, you, so you threw in the filler word of basically as you tried to find it. Yeah, and then I went with basically went with certificates. Gift certificates. You print, you print them, out. them out. Yeah, you do. You mail them you, in. Yeah, or you could stop by and just you know we'll check your gift certificate. Yeah, there's stuff in the UDK. Okay, that is it for today's show. We'll be back. Thursday with another episode. (laughs) Talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.